in these uh, chronicles, uh, fire and uh, blood, uh, there are a lot of dragons. <laughs> I, I love dragons. Uh, Why? Yes. What the dragon represents to you? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, of course, I love dragons initially in the work of other people, uh, reading stories about dragons when I was young. Uh, there's just something cool about dragons. And it's interesting how many societies have dragons in their mythology. And why is that? You know, the dragons are different. Our Western dragons are very different from, say, the dragons of Asia, of China, and, and the kingdoms of uh, the Far East. But, uh, but they do have dragons. And uh, what is the dragon? You know, the, he was on the heraldic symbols of the Welsh. Uh, King Arthur was Arthur Pendragon. He was all tied up with the, the mythology of dragons. My namesake, St. George, got his sainthood by killing a dragon. Yes. <laughs> Although if you look at the engravings, it seemed to be a very small dragon. It was about the same size as George himself in many of the statues and carvings that I've seen. Um, Tolkien gave us smog, uh, and the other great dragons of the Cimmerillion, all very powerful mythical animals, so... Uh, and in your books, they establish a very special connection with the person who rides, who rides them. It's uh, almost... Right, right. Uh, it's almost um, the continuation, uh, right? You, you, well, the, you have to bond. Yeah, you have to bond with the dragon. There's no way you can physically intimidate a dragon to uh, obey you. Uh, I mean, I, I know people who uh, ride horses. A horse is a big, powerful animal, too, but we're, we're able, as riders, to cow the horses, and, you know, jockeys use their whips to propel the horse and so forth. You, you annoy a dragon, he'll just turn his head around and roast you or bite you in half. So it, it takes something more than physical force. Uh, it takes this kind of psychic bond, and the precise nature of that bond is mm -hmm. something that... Uh, I'm still exploring in a world of ice and fire and, and uh, you know, the, the novels yet to come and also the Targaryen histories. Yes, why uh, the Targaryen have this relationship, this connection with dragons? Well, that's, that's something you have to keep reading the books okay, to find out. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be more of that in both the novels to come and in, and, and in Fire and Blood to come. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the Targaryens are the last surviving um, noble house of the freehold of Valeria, which uh, fell 400 years before the start of Game of Thrones in a cataclysm that uh, and you it know, was, darkened the skies for... It was their fault, uh, the perhaps, fault of Valeria. Perhaps, yes. They, <laughs> and they had a lot of dragons, and there were a lot of rival dragon-riding families. But only the Targaryens saw the, the doom of Valeria coming and were able to get, get themselves away long enough to spare them and their beasts. And it, it's interesting because the connection between the dragon and, uh, well, let's say the owner. I don't know if the owner is the correct word. No. Uh, I wouldn't say owner. Rider. Rider, okay. Uh, it's interesting because that connection can be so strong that a dragon can kill another dragon. Yes. Yes. They're very temperamental beasts. <laughs> <laughs> They represent power, of course, in, in, in the books. Um, you know, I don't believe any more than J.R. Tolkien did in, in uh, fantasy novels as allegory, but there are certain things you can, you can look at. Um, the dragons can win wars for you. Yes. That's established in the histories, but they can't necessarily produce peace or prosperity or <clears throat> help you rule the nation, you know. Daenerys Targaryen is finding it out in Marine when she, you know, she defeats the cities of Slaver's Bay uh, with her three dragons. But then in trying to rule as queen, she could destroy Marine anytime she wants by just unleashing the dragons, could kill a lot of people, you know, wipe out the most of the population of the city, reduce the entire city to a fiery inferno. But that doesn't help her come up with good laws or to establish peace between the original inhabitants and the, the freedmen and the people that she's brought in. So ruling is more than just the power to destroy. And that's a lesson that she's definitely learning.